Hey guys, IVB here. Uh, this is the first in a three-part series on how to install a security system. Uh, part two will be how to program it, and then part three will be how to connect it into a home automation engine. So with that, let's get started. Um, I have a mixture of slides and then uh, real-life uh, product examples to give you. Uh, I'm just a, a do-it-yourselfer, so I don't have parts to show you for everything. I will have to use some pictures uh, for some of this. Let's get started. Before we get into it, uh, a couple of disclaimers. A, do your own homework. Uh, I'm just an end user. Uh, I'm not making any money doing this. I'm not an electrician. I'm not a professional installer. Uh, so do your homework. Uh, take a look at everything you need to learn yourself and don't sue me if there's a problem. Um, second thing is, uh, to keep this uh, YouTube video short, uh, I omitted some pretty key details. Um, things like end line resistors or other things. Uh, you're gonna have a lot more learning if you really wanna do this. this I don't know, four or five minute video, whatever it ends up being, is not going to be enough. Uh, the third, my third thing is I'd recommend getting a pro to run the wiring because uh, if, especially if you're running inside the wall, you're going to have high voltage there. Uh, you got code issues to deal with. They do things wrong and the police roll. Uh, there's probably going to be an $800 fine per false alarm. Uh, so do yourself a favor. If you can afford it, get a pro to run these wires. Um, finally, um, I only have ever used Elk, and I've only ever used Next Alarm, so I'm going to talk about those. Uh, they're not paying me, um, but I don't want to talk about things like I know there's the HAI, uh, I know there's other options. Yeah, I don't know anything about them, so um, do that. Uh, I'm going to talk about what I know. We talk about zones and security systems, but at, at, at its heart, a circuit is really the foundational concept. When you have a door open, and, and I'll take a look, a lot of times you guys are used to seeing in, uh, recessed sensors here that actually get, this thing gets drilled into your door, right? Um, when, what you do is you put these two things together, the security system will send out a very light voltage on this uh, line, and on the return trip, um, if it sees that same voltage, it knows that this magnet is closed, right? If, however, this magnet is open, well, then that circuit is not closed and it knows that door itself is open. So that's how you, at its heart, uh, that's how you handle uh, t uh, checking zones, right? Uh, you may not want to recess, so I have an example here of an on surface, so maybe you have like vinyl windows and uh, you don't want to drill into them, right? Uh, or maybe you know you want to drill down into your walls, right? So what you do is you actually put this on the door or window, you put this on the uh, house side, and you can see the little wiring there, right? And so you run this, um, you can run it along a wall, run it along your baseboard, some people I know buried inside their baseboards. And so that way, um, at its heart, that's all it is. It's really simple. Option two is wireless. Uh, maybe you don't want to have wiring at all, uh, and you don't mind having to deal with changing batteries every, let's say, three years or so. Uh, this is how this is what one of these wireless uh, sensors looks like. It really, it's it's just a battery right there, right? You can see it. So you put this on your door. You put this here. Um, you can see here. There's a little. Uh, I can't get the focus up. Yep, you see a transmission code. I'll show you where in the programming section. And now, bada bing, you got a wireless sensor hooked up. And then finally, let's talk about motion sensors. Motion sensors are not just a signal, a signal um, going in and out for the circuit, but they also need power. So here's a spare uh, motion detector that I have, and here's the backing of it. So it kind of clips in like this. You'll see these little pins right there. And then it comes into geez, great, this thing here where you can see there's your uh, you know normally closed, um, that is the signal wires, and then plus and minus uh, stand for, obviously, power. And so that's how uh, power devices, you've got motion detectors, you can have glass break sensors, uh, even smoke and heat detectors sometimes uh, need four wires. Uh, so that's how those things work. Okay, so let's fast forward. Let's assume you've got all your motions wired up. Uh, you got your uh, doors and window sensors all hooked up. You got it all uh, hooked up, ready to go. What do you do now? How do you connect it to a monitoring service? Well, let's take a look. Uh, you can either connect it via your regular phone line, in which case here's your phone line coming in to your, the telephone panel you already have, uh, and right now it's just going to your phones. Uh, you just have a wire come off to your security panel. Uh, there, there's a special uh, jack that allows your security system to seize the phone lines uh, in the case of an alarm, so uh, you know somebody can't just pick the phone up off the handle and disable your security system. Uh, other option is to use the internet. I think this is a lot more common nowadays, especially if you want to hook it into your 
home automation system. So in that case, you still have your security panel, uh, but you connect it to an Ethernet adapter. That Ethernet adapter, uh, that's an ELK Ethernet adapter, uh, hooks up to, in my case, the Next Alarm broadband adapter, and then it goes into the same cable modem router stuff that you got hooked up to all your regular computers right now. So that's how you hook it in. Okay, and then here's the ELK uh, panel. Uh, obviously, it's a very small image. Uh, sorry about that, but this is good enough for this case. You'll see here there's spots for 16 zones, so you can have multiple windows on one zone if you'd like, and that's another level of detail I'm not ready to get to in this video. So you connect your wired sensors into here, um, including either door and window or your motions would go into here, the signal cables. Uh, there's a bank for power. So that way, if some of these were motions or uh, some of the other power detectors, um, I think glass break needs power too. So then that uh, you get power from here. So of the four wires, two go into here and two go into there. That's the on-off switch. If you're using the phone line, you connect it into the, this section up here. And then the Ethernet adapter gets plugged into here. Um, if you have, uh, you know, you're going to have things like multiple keypads, a wireless receiver, uh, you may even need more than 16 zones. I, I have a psychotic number of zones. So all I did was you can get additional boards. And so they connect in. It's called a data bus. You'll hear RS-485. So that's where these things go. So that's how you put everything together. Okay, so that's the end of part one, doing the physical wiring. I'm going to have part two, which is programming, be a separate video, uh, since that'll be only specific to folks that use the ELT. Uh, this part one is uh, valid for HAI. Um, I know there's other manufacturers. Uh, DSC or something like that. I, I don't know. Uh, so anyhow, uh, thanks for watching this one. If you're interested, uh, go on to part two on programming the ELT. And part three will then be how to connect uh, that into your home automation engine.